Who are these people? So that's wow. And then and then uh, I, I don't know. Were you were you born and raised? I I, I didn't ask the question. How, how long have you lived in East Palestine? Were you do, have you lived there your whole life? Were you born and raised? I was you know. I'm just wondering. You yeah. know. Go ahead. Yeah, um, for the majority of my life, I've, I've lived in Northeast Ohio, um, in right, like the these. general vicinity vicinity of of that area. Um, so yeah, I, I've like been away for a couple years, but I've always seemed to find my way back. I mean, uh, one of the things that, unfortunately, you know, the homeowners, the people who own homes and have jobs. I mean, this is one of the things that I keep coming back to in my own head is. You know, you've got to go to work and the area is possibly toxic and contaminated, allegedly, quote unquote. I mean, you know, we don't we don't really know. And this is where your your home, your livelihood, all of your financial investment is is already located. Your family's here. I mean, they they poisoned your town. What do you what do you do? Uh, I, I don't even I'm, I'm so glad you, you're organizing your you know, residents to kind of share knowledge and resources because I, I can't even imagine what, and it could happen anywhere. That's the, that's the scariest part to me is this could happen anywhere to any town. And we need to let everybody know that this could happen and there needs to be more of a plan in place. We need to do more to help you um, and to have a readiness plan in place so that when this happens more often, because we know it's going to, unfortunately, um, mm -hmm we can take care of the people and not have their home values completely deteriorated. And, you know, there are people's conspiracy, whatever, you know, that think that that's actually part of the whole thing. Northbrook Southern, this has been a, a key hub. And there was questions about all of that. Uh, I don't want to get into the politics though, because you guys are dealing with, with the reality of this every day. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, we, we've met some people that they can't retire now. Like, <laughs> Their home, their home has depreciated in value so much that, you know, we have 65 year old people who have earned their right to retire who, who can't, um, because they can't sell their house for what it was worth. And even if they sold it for what it's listed at, who's going to buy it? Um, exactly. So, yeah. That's but that, Alan, that, Shaw, Alan that. Shaw's sorry. So he's really sorry this happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We know he's, he's like, real sorry. Uh, also, if I could just a um, couple things I just wanted to, to, to note was, first of all, um, we do know that this area is not safe. That's not something that we don't know. That is something we do know. We know that because we have um, actual data showing us that the number of people who are reporting daily that they are smelling intense smells of toxic chemicals has not decreased. In fact, today the reports are that people are smelling it worse than ever because of the cleanup. So we know for a fact that people are being exposed to these toxic chemicals. We know these chemicals are toxic. We know that for a fact. And we know that people are being exposed to them because they're smelling it. So those are two things we do know. The things that we don't know are exactly what chemicals they're being exposed to. And the reason we don't know them is because the EPA has been deliberately obfuscating um, and running cover for Norfolk Southern. Because as long as we don't know exactly what chemicals they're being exposed to, then it it's difficult to prove legally that these people have been harmed. And that's the whole point. That's what it's all about. It's all about running cover for Norfolk Southern to protect them. And it's not just about the money because, I mean, everyone, because there's going to be a lawsuit and the Norfolk Southern is going to shell out however many millions of dollars and the, the lawyers will collect their their pound of flesh and the people will get their 1600 2000 3000 whatever petty amount of money that the Norfolk Southern can be made to part with in the legal system but that's i don't think that's really the issue people should be concerned with the problem is that felonies were committed the problem is mm. aggravated arson is a felony poisoning is a felony Con a conspiracy to cover up any of those felonies is also a felony. Anybody participating, anyone with knowledge that these people have been poisoned, who is actively participating in covering up that these people have been poisoned, is committing a felony. Everybody who is aware that Norfolk Southern set all these other things on fire that they did not have any permission to do, which caused harm to people, 
and is covering that up and helping them covering up is committing a felony. All of these people are committing this, this is not a white collar crime. It's white collar in the sense that only somebody in a corporate position could possibly do this and get away with it. But it's not white collar in the sense of it's like a it's like a oh there's some person embezzled billions of dollars from stealing from millionaires. That's not that's not the issue. This is a level of damage that is being done to life that is the is no less and in fact considerably greater than what have already been adjudicated in international courts as a war crime. This is the sort of thing that a, a smaller, a much smaller version of this was was used as a pretext to for the United States to go into Syria and actively attempt to overthrow their their government because they were accused of gassing people. That is what is happening. They have just gassed, exposed millions of people throughout the entire Northeast to a toxic cocktail of chemicals. And we don't even know what that toxic, chemi- toxic, co- uh, toxic cocktail of chemicals even is, and they're not even trying to find out. And the reason they're not trying to find out is because as long as they don't test, as long as they don't do the test and find out what chemicals they are, they can pretend they aren't there. And they did that intentionally. They did that bird intentionally. They knew what they were doing when they did it. It's not that-, that- 100%. There was Absolutely. negligence or that they that they didn't know what was going to happen. Um, Absolutely not. No, it, these, these, none of these things are secrets. It's not a secret that if you burn um, the paint, just for instance, just the paint that's on that's on the that's on the train cars. It's not a secret like that's we know that that makes a certain amount of dioxins, just for example. Like there's mm-hmm. not a, these, these people. And in fact, the reason we know this is because Aaron Bragg, one of our team members, big up to Aaron Bragg. He's phenomenal. Uh, actually did an interview with status quo, which I suggest you all check out if you listen to this. Um, and he detailed how he is aware because he is he this is what he does for a living. He's one, someone who knows how about how toxic chemicals are transported in train cars. And they're supposed to get a update. A manifest of exactly what's in the train cars as it's burning like but they didn't they didn't send that out um and then by first of all there is all kinds of rigmarole regarding who is actually taking responsibility for saying yeah set the vinyl chloride on fire when we we know that um through the, act, the actual chemistry of vinyl chloride even though this isn't being talked about um there is a lot of reason to conclude that there was there was no actual danger of that vinyl chloride exploding at all and the people who were transporting it knew that because the people who were transporting it know how vinyl chloride works so all of the, all of these things are and then but even then there was only one car of vinyl chloride that was actually burning so why did they set five cars of vinyl chloride on fire why did they set frozen vegetables on fire why did they set all this other stuff on fire none of that was, was there was no danger of any of that exploding so even by even if they were given consent by the fire department to to burn one car of vinyl chloride, what about all of the rest? All of the rest was not part of that. So why did they do it? Obviously, they knew that it would that it would create poison. It was it's poison in itself. There was no reason to release it. The only reason that I can think of is one because it helps them get the train car on fire, uh, their 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 train back on track faster, and more importantly, possibly the fact that they are insured for damages to, um, to 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 materials that aren't just being thrown away so in terms of how their insurance works there's probably a very good reason for them to just burn everything rather than have to worry about cleaning it up and all the damages that would cause because then they have to worry about one shelling out money because it's still being toxic chemicals are still being released so it's not to worry about the lawsuit and that's probably not going to change very much just based on how much of it it is so why not just burn everything and make up the losses with the insurance i, I can't say for certain that that's what's happening but i do know that there's enough information that it deserves to be looked into well, there certainly sounds like there's there's a lot there. Um, 